Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. This video and a series of videos we're going to do on the Electronic E6B. This first series is going to be on the Sporties brand, specific to the Sporties brand, and then I'm already having some calls to do the CX-3 Asa brand, so we'll probably do that as well after this, but they are different in the way that they're configured and the buttons that they have, so we have to do separate separate videos for each. So this first video is just going to be the basics of how to use it, what the buttons mean, and how to and how to navigate those buttons. And then we'll do a series of videos on examples, calculation examples. So let's get to it. There are two types of E6B flight computers allowed on the FAA written exam. You have your paper or metal manual E6B, which is what I've what I've always taught. I had an examiner when I went through my private pilot's license that was big on old school stuff. So he would say, you know, what happens if your iPad battery lights on fire randomly? Or what happens if your E6B batteries go dead or the screen stops working or something like that? So we always wanted us to use the analog version of things, you know, navigate with VORs and pilotage and dead reckoning and then. Uh, come up with our cross-country planning and and calculations with a manual E6B. So that's how I've always taught, but a lot of students like the electronic E6B. And now that I've kind of been freshening up on it, I kind of agree why. <laughs> uh, on the FA written exam, if you know how to use this thing, it is allowed. And if you know how to use it, it can be very, very, very helpful. So yes, electronic E6Bs, are on the FA written exam, I would stick to one of the more common brands, Sporties or ASA CX-3s. If you have a different brand, I would go ahead and call your testing center and make sure that you're allowed to use that. The one thing that they will do is they're gonna take, they're gonna inspect it, make sure nothing's written on it, nothing's programmed on it, and they'll take the batteries out and then put them back in because that kind of resets everything and you can't store any information when, and because it's it's all reset when you take the batteries out and put them back in. So, but they are allowed. Again, we talked about the two most popular brands. Uh, both are gonna take a little bit of a, a learning curve to use, but once you understand how they work, it could be your best friend for flight planning and the FAA written exam. And we'll show you why. They can calculate everything that the manual paper E6B can calculate, things like ground speed, heading, true airspeed, density altitude, pressure altitude, winds, fuel, etc. But they can also calculate things like weight and balance, cloud base, crosswinds, headwinds, endurance, and range. I had a video a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, on equations you need to know for the FAA written exam. And I talked about how a lot on, the, on your paper E6B, there's some equations written, and then if you just know how to use those procedures, you don't have to memorize as many equations. Well, this goes one step further. You won't have to memorize, you know, weight and balance equations, cloud-based equation, that's a cloud-based dew point equation, crosswind and headwinds. I've talked about how you can calculate crosswind headwinds using either the FAA chart, like a chart or table, or you can do sine and cosine, do trigonomic functions. But if you're not big into math and you just learned the procedure of the E6B, you can calculate them that way. And then things like endurance and range and even the mean aerodynamic cord for more so, sort of advanced flight planning and, and flying while you're in the air. And then again, this train is going to support this video here and the videos after the example videos after we'll focus on sporties and then we'll do the ASA CX-3 later. So the buttons are broken down into four categories. You have Special functions, which are like the power button, selection arrows, and an enter selection button, the time buttons for like clock and timer, sign change, when you want to change a, a value from positive to negative, and then the clear function. And then you have function menus, arithmetic functions, just like a normal calculator, and then conversions. And we'll talk a little bit about each of these. So special functions, we have the power button which turns on and off the entire calculator. And that's 
Here's your, your power button right here on the bottom left. And then you have up arrow, down arrow, and enter button, which are used to move between function options on the screen. And then select them with using the enter button. The current selected function will be flashing. So here we have the up arrow, we have the down arrow, and then we have the enter button. And so you'll, you'll have different options pop up here, and then you can scroll up and down with the arrow buttons, and then the one that's selected will be flashing. And then when you wanna select that one, you press enter and it'll select the one that's currently flashing. And again, you'll see all this in the videos, example videos. Next one, time. This group consists of the timer and the clock. The timer could be used during flights as a stopwatch to then use directly to compute ground speed or fuel consumption using one of the functions. So if you're flying, you can start the timer from one checkpoint to the next and then use that time and use like either your distance or your fuel consumption and find out your fuel consumption rate or your ground speed in flight. And then the clock has three different times. It has a Zulu time, it has a home time and a local time. So you set your home time to, to where you live, you set your Zulu time to the current Zulu time, and then you set your local time to wherever it is that you might be. And then these are the time values. So this clock will pop up the Zulu, home, and local times. And then this timer button will just pop up a single timer for you to start and stop. All right, next we're going to talk about the function menus. These are simply menu shortcuts that group several aviation functions and special functions into each menu. And here we have the Sporties reference card that comes with your calculator. Now this thing is going to be your best friend. Unfortunately, you can't take this with you on the FA written exam. But if you remember what each function does and what it gives you, literally you just have to look for the inputs in the question on your FA written exam. Know what if you know what the outputs are going to be for the particular function. So let me let me talk about it here a little bit. So we're talking about the function menus. These are these groupings here that I have outlined in red. So we have the heading, ground speed, and pressure density altitude uh, menu button. We have the speed menu button, we have the required menu button, we have the wind menu button, flight, and then weight and balance. And then under each of these, you can see they're kind of, so under the heading, ground speed, pressure and density altitude, you have two functions. You have heading ground speed and you have pressure density altitude here. And, and then for speed, you have all these functions grouped here under the speed menu. Required menu, you have all these functions win menu of all these functions and so on and so these are the function buttons that we just talked about so when you press one of these let's say you press the win button it's going to pop up all those functions that you can then choose from using these selection arrows and enter button so when you press a menu function you'll be able to select between the available aviation functions using the selection bu bu buttons that i just mentioned once an aviation function has been selected, you'll be able to, you'll be prompted to enter the inputs. Once you finish entering all inputs for the function, the outputs will appear on the screen. So back to here, these are the different functions. So let's say for wind over here, we, we hit the wind menu button, which is again, right here, this wind menu button. So we hit that. And then it's going to bring up these three functions, which, which we'll show you on the screen. And then if we select one, let's say we use the, the, the cursors to select the wind function right here, it'll ask us for these inputs. So CRS is course, TAS is true airspeed, GS is ground speed, and ADG is heading. So one by one, we're going to input the values for these inputs. So we're going to use the numbers. So let's say our course is 100. We're going to enter 100, then press enter. Then it'll ask us for true airspeed. And we put it, let's say our true airspeed is 120 knots. We put in 120, press enter. Then it'll ask us for our ground speed. 
Same thing, then heading. Once we've input all these, it'll then pop out these outputs, wind direction and wind speed. So if you're on the FA written and you know that the wind function can give you these things, then this is what you need to have, the information you need to have. So if on the FA written, it asks you for wind direction and speed, you can immediately say, okay, well, do I have, you can go into your calculator, you won't have this card again, but you can go in your calculator, you hit the wind function, the wind menu, then select the wind function, and then see if you have all the available information or if you can find and calculate all the available, all the inputs that you need with the available information that you have. So the written question might give you course true airspeed, ground speed, heading, but it might also give you course indicated airspeed, distance and time and heading, where that's still enough information for you with distance and time, you can calculate ground speed, and then with indicated airspeed, you can calculate true airspeed. So again, just, this is a very valuable tool to know and, and kind of, you don't have to memorize this whole thing, but know what each function will give you in this output. And once you select each function on your calculator, it'll show you what inputs you need and you just try and find those on the test. But again, we'll get to these in an example uh, in later videos. Okay, so here are the aviation functions. So when you turn on the screen, it's gonna show all these down here on the bottom. And then when you hit one of these menu bu buttons, it's only gonna show the functions under that menu button. So for heading ground speed, pressure density altitude, it shows us the heading ground speed function and the PD altitude or pressure density altitude function. And then if we hit wind, it's gonna show us the wind function, the crosswind headwind function, and the cloud base function. If we hit speed, it's gonna show us ground speed, planned true airspeed, actual true airspeed, planned Mach number and actual Mach number functions. If we hit flight, it's gonna show us the distance flown function, the top of descent, endurance, leg time, specific range, and fuel per hour functions. If we hit required, it's gonna give us the fuel function, the climb function, descent function, true airspeed, and calibrated airspeed. Which again, remember, calibrated airspeed for us is the same as indicated airspeed. So if on the FA written they give you an indicated airspeed, you can use this calibrated airspeed question because indicated airspeed is assumed the same as calibrated airspeed, airspeed for general aviation aircraft, which fly at slower speeds. And then we have the weight and balance menu, which gives us weight arm, weight moment, and percent mean aerodynamic cord, gives us those three functions. All right, so now let's talk about the arithmetic functions. These are simply like a normal calculator, just a simple calculator where you can perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. These functions can be performed at any time, even when you're in the middle of an aviation function. So let's say, you know, we were doing, let's go back here a little bit to the card. All right, so let's say we're doing distance flown function under the flight menu, and it wants input of ground speed and time. Let's say for when we're inputting the time, we have two times that we want to add together. Let's say we have 10 minutes and 12 minutes that we want to add together. In When it's wanting us to input time, we can just use the, the math functions and just do 10 plus 12 and then press the equals button and then it'll put 22 in time in the time slot and then we hit enter. And so you can use these math functions, these math functions here, you know, and enter in all these numbers and stuff whenever it is at any point, even when you're in the middle of an aviation function. All right, so then uh, we'll talk about conversions. That's the last sort of grouping. And pressing the conversion button means that all the yellow functions will be enabled for the next button push. This is kind of like the function key on your keyboard on like a Windows or like I think it's the, uh, oh gosh, what is that on a Mac? Like the Mac key, the, I, I can't remember what it is, but 
you press the function button and then it kind of changes to the secondary function of each key. So that's the same thing here. These yellow functions are dedicated to converting units. So it's mostly just for conversions, such as nautical miles to statute miles, you know, gallons to liters, meters to feet, etc. And they, there's always the opposite. So there will be a nautical miles to statute miles function, then there will be a statute miles to nautical miles. Right? And so whatever, let's say you have 12 nautical miles and you want it statute miles, then you use this button. But if you have something in statute miles and you want it nautical miles, you use this button. So it flows in this direction. So simply type the number you know, hit the yellow conversion button, then hit the key below the conversion you want made, your number on the screen will be converted to the new units. Conversion button is also used to reset the timer, set the clock, and turn on and off the screen backlight. So here we have the conversion button. So when you press this, the next button press that you make will be these yellow functions. So if you can see like, here's the yellow fun these yellow functions here. So once you've hit the conversion button, the next button push is going to do these yellow functions. All these yellow functions here. So for example, if we wanted to convert kilograms to pounds, we would simply type, let's say 14 kilograms of pounds. We would type in a one and a four and on our screen, it would say 14. Then we'd hit this conversion button and then we'd go down here to the period where it says, oops, where it says kilograms to pounds. And we'd hit the period button after we've hit the conversion button because now it's telling us when we've hit the conversion button, the next button push is gonna do the yellow, what's in the yellow. So we hit that and then, and then this 14 here is gonna change from kilograms to pounds. I don't know what that is, something like 10 pounds? I don't know, I don't know the conversion in my head, but anyways. So, and then, like we said also, if you hit the conversion button and then you hit the timer, it's gonna do this reset and it's gonna reset your timer. If you hit the conversion button and then you do the clock button, it's gonna allow you to set your clock, which you can then use these arrows and the numbers to set your clock. And then this button right here, and I'm not talking about the conversion part, just these, you know, the, the um, colon, that's for when you're setting times. So every time value is gonna be like hours, minutes, seconds. So when you input the hours, let's say 10 hours, then you'll hit this button here, the colon, and then it'll move you on to this part, the next part, and then you can enter like 14 minutes and then hit the colon again. And then it'll set you up to input seconds. And let's say you put 30 seconds in. So that's what the colon button is for. And then finally, these right here, this one turns on the backlight of the screen. And then this one turns off the backlight of the screen. All right, so these are kind of the conversions. This is the, the packet that came with the in instructional packet, which is very valuable. So go and, and read that so that you, it tells you how to do every single function, what it needs and what it want, what it will what give you. And then it also tells you all these conversions and what they are. And then it also tells you what each, so one of the harder things is to know what all these little abbreviations mean. And so it tells you what they all mean. So this is your key. This is what you want to you want to have with you at all times. And it's going to tell you how really how to use the, the calculator. So that's been the basics of the calculator. As I said, in the next video, we will go over some examples and I'll film myself live doing it on the calculator. So you can see exactly what an FA written type question would look like and how to calculate it using all these buttons and the functions that we just talked about.